Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft is also busy rolling out the Windows 11, 22H2 and 23H2 optional bug fix C release update for April 2024, which rolled out late in my part of the world yesterday on the 23rd of April as always. And the update is optional unless you have this toggle turned on, get the latest updates as soon as they're available. Now if you pop over to update history, if if you do decide to install the update, um, it's KB5036980. That's rolled out for Windows 11 for this month. And we get six key highlights, four of which are new features. And this is more or less the same update I did post on a week or two ago when it was still in preview and has now made its way to the stable version. Now, the first new feature I have mentioned previously, and Microsoft says the recommended section now of the start menu will show some Microsoft Store apps, which are from a small set of curated developers. And I have posted on this previously, and some, including myself, consider this to be ads that will show recommended apps from some curated developers in the and from the Microsoft Store. So maybe a bit unfortunate, um, but if you do want to remove these so-called um, the, these recommendations for apps, it's actually quite simple to do. You just right-click um, on your start menu, start head over to your start settings, and here you'll see show recommendations for tips, shortcuts, and new apps and more. You can just pop that off, and what I always do is I actually turn all of these off because I don't like anything in my recommended section. And if we pop back to that, you'll see now that recommended is now empty. And something else I like to do, if that's happened, I just click more pins, and that even makes the recommended section a lot less obtrusive. So um, that's the first of four new features. Now, Microsoft also says that in the coming weeks for the second new feature, your most frequently used apps might appear in the recommended section of the start menu. So once again, um, that's another lot of information coming to the recommended section. But they also mentioned this applies to apps that you have not already pinned to the start menu or the taskbar. And I have also posted on that. And that's only apps that obviously are not pinned um, to your start menu or taskbar, which may be a good thing. And then the third new feature is the update improves the widgets icons on the taskbar. You to the left hand side. They are no longer pixelated or fuzzy. And this update also starts the rollout of a larger set of animated icons. Now, I haven't seen any difference uh, to the pixelation since updating, but nonetheless, that's listed as a new feature, improves widgets icons on the taskbar. And then update affects widgets on the lock screen. And for this one, we're just going to pop over to the lock screen quickly, and hopefully those widgets will be available. And there we go. And I have noticed that I've also getting the markets widget um, with the actual weather. Um, there should be four in total. I'm only seeing two, but nonetheless, um, apparently the widgets now are more reliable, Microsoft says, and have improved quality. And this update also supports more visuals and a more customized experience for you regarding these um, these lock screen widgets. So if we just pop back uh, into the OS quickly, just on a side note, if we head back to our settings, and this time we head to personalization lock screen, you'll notice now that it's got weather and more. So if you want, if you enable weather, you get all the widgets, it's all or nothing as I've posted previously, or you can just click on none and that obviously um, dismisses all those widgets and cards from your lock screen. So just take note of that. And then those are the four new features. And then the uh, first of t uh, two other key highlights is the update affects the touch keyboard. It makes the Japanese 106 keyboard layout appear as expected when you sign in. And then the next one is the update addresses an issue that affects settings. Apparently it stops responding when you dismiss a fly out menu. So just to demonstrate, this is a fly out menu. So that's where the problem was lying in settings. Now those are the six key highlights, which include four new features. So if you do want to stick around, and this is a non-security update that does include some other bug fixes. And I'm just going to pull a couple out here that you may be interested in and just get through these as quick as possible. The update addresses an issue that affects a low latency network. Um, the speed of data on the network degraded significantly. It also addresses a race condition that might stop a machine from starting up. 
Um, it addresses a memory leak, which is always a good thing. It's the update affects Windows subsystem for Linux 2. WSL2, apparently intermittent name resolution, was failing in a split DNS setup. And it also addresses an issue that affects universal printers. The system was creating duplicate print queues for them. And I always notice there's a print fix that rolls out, give or take, um, from month to month with these optional bug fix C release updates. And then three more to go. The update includes quarterly changes to the Windows kernel vulnerable driver block list file. And that's to do with the Windows uh, security app. And apparently there's a stop error that's been addressed, which is a blue screen of death, which is always a good thing. That um, apparently was affecting Bluetooth advanced audio distribution profile. And then the last one, just to mention, there are some others, but these are just the main ones you may be interested in. The update addresses an issue that affects the resilient file system, REFS. Apparently a high load might make the system unresponsive and um, also signing in might be slow. So um, those are the bug fixes that have rolled out. And um, just to find out what our build has been upgraded to, if we head over to our search and we just enter Winver about Windows, for Windows 11 23H2, the OS build is now sitting on 22631.3527. And if you're still running 22H2 of Windows 11, that'll be 22621.3527. So that's more or less, guys, what's new in this update, KB5036980 for Windows 11. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.